Good afternoon, everyone. How are you all doing? It's uh, been very warm today. So, so January 28th, let's begin our worship on Sunday. Let's close our eyes and prayerfully begin our worship. I will raise my eyes to the mountains. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Amen. Hallelujah. Our, our beloved Heavenly Father, on this day, we would like to worship you with our brothers and sisters. You guided us, all of us be here, and we're thankful that we can worship you in your presence. No matter what happens in this world, your love and compassion never changes, and you're guiding us all the time. And God, you are the creator of heaven and earth, from, and you create it from nothing. And we're thankful that you are the giver of life as well. So with a new heart, new grace, please, uh, please guide us and lead us. So may you receive glory and we will be receiving new power from you. We thank you and pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Our beloved Heavenly Father, we praise your name. We come before you, before your presence and worship you with our brothers and sisters. Please receive our heart. And in the past year of 2023, in your protection and the peace, we have been able to um, finish the year when your blessing we are thankful for that and as we start this new year we want to we, we have started this new walk with you please guide us according to your will may this year be the time to, that is pleasing to you and please uh, answer our prayers according to your will with you provided Japanese church here in Austin for us and you provided Pastor Lee for us so we can listen to your word in Japanese and we can study the Bible in Japanese and by prayer we understand what the faith means and we understand the word of God thank you for this wonderful blessing we pray for the, the continuous growth of Japanese church <laughs> and we cannot see Jesus and uh, touch him with our physical eyes and physical body, but we know spiritually he is with us and right beside us. <laughs> and as we pray and come before you, we know that uh, Jesus is present and we can feel spiritually that we can feel him touching us. So may our actions, may our heart, may our thoughts in our heart will be pleasing to you. And for those who are struggling with disease and sickness, I pray that you will help them and rescue them. And there are uh, disasters and wars that we don't know when they will end. And in Japan, a lot of people die because of earthquake. I pray that for the quick recovery for them. In Lamentations 3.22, it says, Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for His compassions never fail. The God of peace and love, please forgive our sins. We are so ignorant. Please, um, may your peace will be on this earth and your will be done. We give you thanks for everything and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Esther chapter 3, verse 1 through 7. After these events, King Ahasuerus 
honor of Haman, the son of Hamadath the Agagite, and promoted him and established his authority over all the officials who were with him. All the king's servants who were at the king's gate bowed down and paid homage to same Haman. For so the king had commanded regarding him, but Mordecai neither bowed down nor paid homage. Then the king's servants who were at the king's gate said to Mordecai, Why are you violating the king's command? Now it was when they had spoken daily to him and he would not listen to them that they told Haman to see whether Mordecai's reason would stand, for he had told them that he was a Jew. When Haman saw that Mordecai neither bowed down nor paid homage to him, Haman was filled with rage. But he considered it beneath his dignity to kill Mordecai alone, for they had told him who the people of Mordecai were. So Haman thought to annihilate uh, all the Jews, the people of Mordecai, who were found throughout the kingdom of Ahasuerus. In the, in the first month, which is the month Nisan, in the twelfth year of King Ahasuerus, poor, that is the lot, was cast before Haman from day to day and from month to month until the twelfth month, that is the month of month Adar. Very much. Let's pray one more time. If you have any pain with the sickness, you may place your hand or you can place your hand on your heart and, and especially pray for remember early who, who is hospitalized. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Our Heavenly Father, Jesus came to this world to save us and help us. 2,000 years ago, He healed many people and in that same power, the, the power to raise people is still working. So, as we believe in His help, salvation and help, uh, we pray as we place our hand on, on the pain in our lives. Pray the blood of Jesus will heal. Give us the faith to believe that you will heal. Please renew us with the power of creation. And if for those who don't have faith, I pray that they will have also have faith in you. And for those who have faith, will be depending on you even more and have stronger faith so that they can share the gospel with others. Please fill us with your new grace. May your will be understood. I pray that the Holy Spirit will uh, speak to each one of us direct, directly so that we will not be hearing the human words and ideas, but we will understand God's will and God's salvation. We give you thanks and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. It's a little unbalanced today. <laughs> So let's look at your, the person next to you. <laughs> Do you think that you've met, you've, you've known this person? Are you happy that you have, you've known this person next to you? Are you happy because you know the person next to you? Some people think they will be uh, very happy, or some people may be thinking, why do I know this person? Could be your spouse. And if you are happy to know your spouse, that's a wonderful thing. But if you're thinking, why did I 
marry this person and I have so much hard time. Some people may be thinking that way. And some people are working in a company and their bosses are um, really giving him a hard time. So he was always looking at his wife, uh, his, his wife's picture. So his colleague thought he really loves his wife and he looked at his picture. Uh, it will be a, a comfort for him in a hard, harsh environment to work. But this person, whenever I looked at, whenever we go through a hard time, I look at my picture, or my wife's picture, and uh, I can overcome it because I, I've, uh, <laughs> because I've, I've been with this wife, with this wife for this long, so I can overcome this hardship in the company. So. If I can, if I can stand with my wife, I can stand with this hard time in the company. That's what it means. So you may think that how happy you are with your uh, somebody, or how you may regret to know somebody. But whatever God has, God is always, always leading us to the uh, way of blessing. And Esther ended up uh, became with the help. Esther became the the queen. And later uh, Haman comes in the story. So either you get to know somebody who is nice or evil. Whatever the people around you, with God's plan, everything will be good. And so we can see that from this story. So when good things happen, bad things happen, whatever happens, everything is your our training, we come out training and He is leading us to a blessing and to His plan. So when Esther became the queen, and you see somebody who supported, helped Esther to become queen. You can see this in chapter 2 that we studied last week. This person is a, a, a he guy. When, the, when they choose um, the queen, he took care of those girls and uh, he was managing all the girls. So that means he was trusted by the king. So he knows what he, what the king likes, what kind of uh, perfume king king likes, the color, the food. The, he knows what the king likes, what kind of person uh, the king will be pleased. So with. For this he guy, Esther was favored. So uh, the Esther started to receive all the good things. And the important thing is that what um, the Esther did not seek anything other than whatever Hegai provided because Esther was an obedient person, obedient to her superior. And Hegai knows what kings likes and what kings dislike. So whatever Hegai provided and recommended, if you only have those, will be favored by king. But when other girls, when they go to the palace, you know they have they have seen, they saw the perfumes and the, the things that they have never seen outside the palace, so they started to use it. But the king may not like those smell. So, because Esther had an obedient heart and she was, she was learning how to be obedient. So Esther was doing only things that Hegai recommended. And in the, as a result, King favored Esther and chose her as um, queen. And also Mordecai. Um, who raised Mo Esther, 
was, uh, did a good job to raise Esther that way. So, and Mordecai told Esther not to reveal her uh, identity, racial identity as a Jew because it could be a uh, um, disadvantage or for Esther to become queen, so Mordecai told her not to reveal it. And and Mordecai was uh, sit, uh, sitting at the gate and, and trying to uh, check on Esther and see if there's any need she needs, she has. Mordecai was serving at the king's gate. And he was a diligent worker. Uh, and he was not intended to find out, but he happened to uh, heard. He happened to her that two eunuchs were trying to assassinate assassinate the king. And the king's name, the Tiresh and Bigfam, was trying to assassinate the king. It, and the way that their names revealed that uh, uh, it proves this is a true historical rec record. And uh, you can see uh, people, scholars believe that Big Thumb is one of the seven uh, people who advised the king to get rid of the queen. And Mordecai heard what happened. So through Esther, Mordecai reported this to the king. And Esther told the king, uh, reported this to the king with uh, Mordecai's name, that he was the one who found out. So the king captured, arrested them and executed them. So Mordecai was the uh, one who is supposed to be rewarded for rescuing the king. And but only he didn't receive anything, but only his name was uh, written in the record. And this was a foreshadowing for the, the salvation of Jews, that this will be used later. So Mordecai might be wondering, uh, why didn't I get any reward for saving the king? He might have got it. Right. Through God's um, um, because God had something bigger reward for Mordecai. And sometimes you may be wondering, I, I did so much and I served in church and worked so hard, but nobody recognized me, but God remembers. And God always rewards for your work. And the reward is far, far bigger and better than we think of. So, it is not my time, but in God's time, God, uh, we need to be expecting in the God's blessing in His time. So Mordecai uh, saved the king, and he had no, received no, uh, no reward, but we can see somebody was promoted. It was Haman. Haman. He became the um, he became the number two in the in the empire. Now, I explained this last week. He was an Agagite. Haman. In Agag. He, we can see this name in 1 Samuel, he was a king of Amalekite. So Agag was the... It was a title for the king, for the Amalekite's king. In Japan, um, the Emperor Tenno is the, the Emperor of Japan. 
or in Egypt, Pharaoh was the title for the king. So Agag was the title for the Amalekite king. So they were the royal family. So, at first, we will see the Agagai, the Haman. And Mordecai, in chapter 2, we see he was a Benjamite. So Benjamite was the first king of Israel, was Saul. So, Benjamite were the, the kings. Uh, he was uh, the line of king, king, king Saul. So in Esther, we see the, the battle between Mordecai and Haman, but it is is the uh, Israelites and Amalekites. Uh, so as we read it, the Old Testament, if we read that particular incident, only that incident, it may not mean much, not, it may not mean anything, but as we, uh, we need to read the Old Testament as we think of Jesus and salvation. So this battle between Mordecai and Haman is the uh, Israelites and Amalekites battle. And, and Amalek is a symbol of God's enemy who is rebelling against them. So this is ultimately the battle between God and Satan. And in Exodus chapter 17, we can read this incident when, when Israel was doing anything, Amalekites started to attack Israelites. The very first uh, battle between uh, Israelites and Amalekites happened when um, Moses was raising his hand and that won victory. And, and God said, because the Lord has sworn, the Lord will have a war against Amalek from generation to generation. What did he mean? Uh, generation to generation. So, until the world, if until the end, world ends, the God will keep fighting with, against Amalek, Amalekites. Because Amalekites were always uh, uh, rebelling against God and attacking his people. So God um, ordered, commanded Saul, the first king of Israel, to fight against Amalekites. Because God was remembering what He said in Exodus. So God orders, um, commanded Saul to uh, fight against Samaric, but King Saul did not obey. He let Agag, the king, alive. And that became a problem. Because Agag, the king of Amalek, was always sinning. So um, Saul was supposed to execute this evil king. He never repented, and he always rebelled against God. But King Saul did not obey that. And, and this will uh, this became the type of foreshadowing of uh, Jesus, who later will completely destroy um, uh, Amalekites and Amalekites and Esther. Uh, the Mordecai story is a type as well, how God destroys his enemy. So Haman, the enemy of Israel, here in the story, today's story, Haman became, uh, prom was promoted. And, and king, the king told people to bow down and, and uh, pay homage to Haman. And this, uh, this uh, action of bowing, worshiping, should be only this home, 
Um, this particular word was used, supposed to be used only for God. So it means they, the command was telling people to worship this person as if he is God. If Haman is like God, if, if the king um, maybe king was showing if his somebody who is under him is uh, uh, respected and bowed down and worshipped maybe king can show how great he is by being superior to him but, uh, but why did Mordecai refuse to do this? and the people who he worked with told Mordecai why don't you why you disobey king's uh, order, the king's command. Was Mordecai, um, if Mordecai um, was uh, always disobedient, he could be fired easily. But he, this, but this was the only command that he could not uh, obey. Why did Mordecai refuse to bow down to Haman? It was the matter of his faith. And every day his, uh, his friends told him, asked him, why do you disobey? But Mordecai uh, tried not to say the, uh, the reason why, but at the end he told them because that, is, that he is a Jew. And because he is Jew, he cannot bow down to people. But what did, what did Mordecai told Esther not to say? That she, he told Esther not to tell others his, her Jewish uh, heritage. He told Esther not to tell others, but he told others about himself. But at first he tried not to tell them because he didn't have to. But as the other people inquired him why he disobeyed, so finally he revealed uh, his racial identity that he was a Jew. So, bowing down to people is like bowing down to idols, so he could not do it as a Jew. And when Haman heard about this, he was enraged. And normally, he could just punish Mordecai. And of course, he was Amalekite. He was, uh, he was on the, uh, the Satan was behind him, controlling him. So, not only Mordecai, but he decided to annihilate the entire entire Jewish na Jewish race. So, as Mordecai uh, disobeyed the king's command, and, and sometimes the king, um, king commands the people to bow down to uh, the, the idols that's not alive, but this time, um, King's command was to bow down to a living person, but as a Jew, he could not do this. Uh, 
But um, Mordecai was not the only one who uh, kept their Jewish faith. It happened during the uh, Babylonian Empire as well. You can read this in the book of Daniel. And Daniel and his three friends, um, when king made the golden statue and they were told to bow down, but these three young boys refused to do so. And they were told that they will be thrown into the fire if they don't bow down. But even so, they refused to bow down to the idol. So, in Daniel chapter 3, we can see this. <laughs> so what happened to those three? So he was thrown into the fire. <laughs> so the names are written here. Uh, God. Uh, what, what did God do to those three? And when they looked at it, from outside, and those three were thrown into the fire, but they saw the fourth person. And what people were saying is, we, they, we threw three people in there, but there are fourth person, and this fourth person looked like a son of God. So this is a, a, this is a theophany, the manifestation of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament times. So even in the fire, Jesus came and saved them. So at that time, people uh, realized the Jewish God is the only true God, and people confessed that way. And not only three friends of Daniel, Daniel himself uh, had to go through the trial. And there were people who accused Daniel because he was praying um, other than the king himself. They made a rule that people can only pray to God or pray to the king. But Daniel, as usual, that, he, that was his daily habit to pray to God. So he was thrown into the den of lions. But what happened to him? These hungry lions did not do anything. He was unharmed and saved. And the king in, of Babylon realized that God, Jewish God, is the true God. So they refused to worship, bow down to anything other than God. And their uncompromising, un the Mordecai's faith was this uncompromised, uncom uncompromising faith. They, he could not bow down to anyone who is alive. And Joseph also went through the similar thing. When he was uh, a slave, his master's wife was uh, um, uh, tempting him, but Joseph confessed, how, how can I commit such sin and sin against God? Even if, even if nobody is watching, even if he is killed, I cannot rebel against God. So Daniel's friends, three friends, were Daniel himself. And all these people, they refuse to sin against God. And as they confess, even if it, uh, if it's harmful, it bring harm on himself, they refuse to disobey. 
And through them, God revealed his the plan, wonderful plan of salvation. And Mordecai was one of them. So, Mordecai told Esther not to tell that she is a Jew because it has nothing to do with her faith. But um, when it comes to the matter of his faith, Mordecai refused to bow down and reveal to others that he is a Jew because, and because of his Jewish faith, he um, he confessed to others that this is the reason why I cannot disobey and bow down to a human. So, when you say, as in the title, I'm a Christian, when you say I'm a Christian, that means you are only worshipping God. What do you worship? In the histories, in, in our human history, the Satan always uh, tempts us and to compromise, uh, compromise with our sin. Who was this? It's Adolf Hitler. <laughs> If we are living in the time, uh, Hitler's time in Germany, in order to live, we had to greet and do and, uh, and help the Nazis. Or, but if you believe, what do they have to do? Even if they will be killed, but there were people who try to um, keep their faith and not compromising what they believe. And their, uh, their church is called Confessing Church, and one of the leader, Bonhoeffer, he kept his faith and protected uh, uh, what he believed. And he also said um, being silent is also uh, evil. So people who, because he was against, he went against na Nazis and he was imprisoned and executed. And uh, we often sing this song, and this uh, word was written by Paul Heffer. My God's loving power silently surrounded, we are protected wonderfully. So we walk and live these days together and go together. It still matters all the past oppressing our hearts and evil days, so wrestling all Lord to our souls, so scared and sore, give rescue. And so Jesus saved him. He saved uh, from evil. He did not compromise to evil. He won victory against it. He was executed, but he was rescued from evil. So no matter how, how bad the evil that comes to you, we need to only believe in God. And that's the Christian's way of living. And when we share the um, about uh, keeping our faith, uh, protecting our faith. I often think of Chick-fil-A. And uh, sometimes after the worship, oh, I, I might like to eat Chick-fil-A. And when there are many people who want to eat Chick-fil-A on Sunday, but you cannot eat it because they are, the stores are not open. And not only the, the founders and the managers, to, in order for the, the employees to be able to go to church on Sunday, they do not open the store. 
It, it, it they lose money by not opening the store. They can earn so much more money if they open the store on Sunday. But in order to keep the worship for God, for God they never compromise this. And there are many people who cannot work, go to worship because they have to work. And, and there are Christians who tell the, the boss, the, the superior, that they cannot go to work because they have to go to church on Sunday. <laughs> so, yes. Um, business model teaches us what is important to us and what is not important. What do people worship? What do people bow down to other than God? That's money. So Jesus said, no one can serve two masters, either you will hate the one and love the other, and you cannot serve both God and money. So when you say you are a Christian, you are confessing that God is the most important thing in this world. We do not bow down to anything else. Worship is very important. And that is a confession of, the, of our faith to say I'm a Christian. So, as Haman planned to kill, annihilate the Jews, he, uh, he threw a lot and decided when to um, decide when to kill the Jews. But in Proverbs, it says that casting a lot is human work, but the decision is from the Lord. So when Haman uh, cast a law to decide the day, but the, the day became the, the day of victory for Jews. And this is symbol symbolically showing Jesus' uh, salvation. When Jesus, Satan killed, Satan thought he can finish Jesus by crucifying him. But by Jesus' death, our salvation was completed. So Jesus is teaching us that Jesus prayed to remove the cup from me before he was crucified. But also he prayed that God's will be done. And when Jesus was tempted by Satan, he used the word of God and won victory. And he told Satan, away from me, for it is written, worship the Lord our God and serve him only. And that's how he told Satan. So when you say, I am a Christian, no matter what kind of temptation or trial you go through, that I will not compromise my faith and I will only worship God and God is the number one most important thing. That means accepting Jesus and, and the worship time dedicated to your worship and giving time and heart to Him. So let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, I am a Christian. And in this world, I only believe in you and only Jesus Christ. And I confess that Jesus is the most important person in our lives. So may we be, be, be pleasing to you as we make this confession. And I pray that others will recognize you as well. We give you thanks and pray in Jesus' name.
As we confess the, the only way of our blessing is in the Lord, and pray that uh, the love of, may the love of the Father and the grace of Jesus and the fellowship of the Spirit will be on each one of us. Amen.